Hi, everyone. The world of nutrition is one populated with myths, half-truths, and a tremendous amount of dogma. Disagreement is rife, even among experts. We know so little about certain nutrients affect our bodies, we might as well be talking about magic. There are a couple of rules, however, that most can agree upon. And one is that protein is good for us. It's nourishing, it's satiating, it's essential for our bodies to function at their best. However, not all proteins are created equal, and there are almost always compromises involved. As a general rule, animal proteins are the most nutritionally dense, but they're terrible for the environment. Plant-based proteins are more sustainable, but they lack the nutritional density of their animal-based counterparts. There is one protein source, however, which combines the nutritional benefits of animal protein with the environmental benefits of plant protein. And you can probably guess where I'm going here. It's bugs. <laughs> At EXO, our mission is to normalize the consumption of insects. So we started about a year ago. We were college roommates at Brown University, and we ordered 2,000 live crickets to our house on campus. As you do. And, and long story short, we figured out how to turn the crickets into a protein powder, how to put the protein powder into bars. Um, and we did this because we believe that crickets, to use a term that is kind of just lost all meaning, is a, a really a true superfood. So they're among the most nutritionally dense animals on the planet. They contain up to 70% protein when you dry them out. And compared to beef jerky, which is about 45%, and we think the closest comparison, that's almost double. They uh, have an amino acid profile that's superior to pretty much all alternatives. So that means it's a higher quality protein. They're high in micronutrients like iron and calcium and B vitamins. They're high in fatty acids like omega-3s. They actually contain double the iron of beef gram per gram and more calcium than milk gram per gram. So from a nutritional perspective, eating insects is a no-brainer. They're also uniquely sustainable. So the environmental drawbacks of industrial livestock rearing are pretty well documented. The agricultural sector contributes 18% of all greenhouse gases. So that's more than the entire transportation sector. We're talking planes, trains, cars, everything combined. So insects present a fantastic alternative to this. Um, and, and they're really one of the most efficient forms of protein you can get. <laughs> I was trying to yell. I was trying to yell. <laughs> Show me to put it in my pocket. How about that? Give that a shot. Testing. All right. Did you guys? Could you hear what I was saying? Okay. Okay. Um, so, they're really one of the most efficient forms of proteins for a variety of different reasons. So, firstly, unlike conventional livestock, insects produce virtually zero methane. Crickets, in particular produce 80 times less methane than cows. Secondly, they're poikilothermic. That basically means that they match their internal body temperatures to the external environment. And as a result, they exert less energy than their warm-blooded counterparts like cows or pigs or chickens. Less energy means less feed and less water. So a pretty standard metric here for measuring efficiency is the feed conversion ratio, which basically measures an animal's efficiency at converting dry feed to desired output, in this case, edible protein. The feed conversion ratio of cows is eight to one. That means you need eight pounds of grain to create one pound of steak. The feed conversion ratio of crickets is one to one. So that's twice as efficient as chickens, four times as efficient as pigs, 
and six times as efficient as cows. Thirdly, insects reproduce frighteningly quickly. <laughs> and, and a single female cricket can lay up to 1,500 eggs in just four weeks. So combining all of these various environmental benefits, less feed, less water, less space, zero methane, the United Nations estimates it's 20 times more efficient to raise crickets for protein than cows. So you're probably all thinking now, this makes wonderful logical sense, especially given that we eat seafood on a regular basis and crickets are basically shrimp on land. But you're also probably all thinking that eating pugs is still kind of weird, which brings us to the real question. How do we actually convince people eating insects is normal? Or better yet, aspirational. How do we overcome the deeply ingrained psychological aversion that we all feel when we consider eating that? It's one thing to discuss the purely logical arguments for consuming bugs. It's another thing entirely to convince people to act on that logic. And luckily, we're not alone here, right? There are a number of foods that have made this transition from weird or strange to normal or, or even cool and trendy. So coconut water, for example, used to be totally a fringe product. And now it's, it's drank more than Gatorade. Kombucha, which is fermented sour bacteria that we drink, is super popular. Organ meats like kidney and heart and brain. And if you eat brain, you can definitely eat crickets. <laughs> uh, are, are, are on menus all over the country. Um, lobster is a really interesting one. In Maine, there's still a law in the books that says it's illegal to feed pr uh, lobster to prisoners more than twice a week because in the 1500s, they rebelled when they were fed it too frequently. It used to be totally uh, food, poverty food, basically. It was called vermin of the sea. And neighbors used to judge each other if they saw lobster shells in the trash. Now, now of course, it's the epitome of decadence, and it's probably uh, one of the more expensive dishes on any restaurant menu. Sushi, so this is another interesting one. How many of you have, have had sushi recently? R right, pretty much every single person. So 50 years ago, you all would be pioneers. Pre-1960, there really was no sushi in the US. And if you did know about it as an American, you, you thought it was totally gross. It was this slimy, raw, fishy thing that nobody knew where to find. There were a small number of sushi chefs, mostly in Los Angeles. And one day, one of them ran out of tuna when he was making his roll. He grabbed the next best thing, which was a California avocado, which is also slimy and fatty and raw. Uh, and he turned it inside out to try and hide it. He put the rice on the outside, called it the California roll. And he basically reimagined sushi for Western palates. So it caught on in Hollywood. And then people started seeing celebrities eating this new thing called sushi. And it spread throughout the rest of the country. Now, obviously, there are sushi restaurants in pretty much every city in America. So we can think of the California roll as an equivalent to spaghetti bolognese, or chicken tikka masala, which are kind of gateway drugs to foreign cuisines, in that they, they, they're formulated to appeal to American palates, but they kind of get you just far enough that you're enticed to try more. Uh, it, if those were the gateway drugs, then we consider crickets our gateway bug. But I'll get to that in a second. The, the, we really draw two lessons from all of these other case studies. The first is that really these things tend to happen top down, right? So you need a bunch of influencers trumpeting the message. In our case for insect protein, we have chefs and celebrities and athletes all talking about the cause. And they're really even echoing um, larger trends in their respective fields. So in the fine dining world, you're now finding some of the best restaurants around the globe featuring insects on their menu. Noma in Copenhagen, which has been the number one restaurant in the world for year, many years running, serves live, in, live ants. They have a fermented cricket soy sauce that they're known to use. 
Um, and they have a research arm called Nordic Food Lab, which has a $500,000 grant to research how to make insects even more delicious. The United Nations put out a 200-page report last year arguing that the US should start eating bugs and pointing out that 80% of the world already eats bugs all the time. And lastly, recent diet trends are all moving in this direction. So you have the real food movement, which is emphasizing natural, unprocessed foods. You have paleo nutrition, which is endorsing eating what our ancient ancestors used to eat. And obviously, we've been eating insects for thousands and thousands of years. The second main lesson we draw is that you really need a vehicle to introduce these strange ingredients into the mainstream, right? So the California roll before you ask people to eat sashimi. And we view protein bars as the California roll for insect cuisine in that it's letting people get a little taste in a form that feels safe and with flavors that feel familiar. So we have a chocolate flavor. We have a peanut butter and jelly flavor. We turn the crickets into a powder so there are no wings or legs or, or anything like that. Um, that. That's actually the cricket powder up there. And we have a chef named Kyle Kanadin who developed all the flavors. He was the former head of research and development at a restaurant called The Fat Duck, which has three Michelin stars, also was number one restaurant in the world while he was there. Um, and the bars taste delicious, and that's key for us in that if we're asking people to taste insects, it's, it has to taste really good, right? Um, and so these are some reactions from different people that have tried it. It took our European forebears uh, 100 years to realize that tomatoes were not deadly nightshade, but actually safe to eat. It took Americans a couple of decades to realize that sushi wasn't some weird foreign cuisine, but actually something delicious that could be a dietary staple. It took just maybe two years for kale to move from punishment food for children to ubiquitous superfood. And as we embrace our role as a group of adventurous eaters, these trends of acceptance are growing exponentially. When we started selling exobars in March, the idea felt and seemed radical. But our early experience suggests that these trends are still getting stronger. Thank you. There, there will be bars out at the coffee break if anybody is feeling adventurous. <laughs> <laughs>